All right, you guys, we are going to do something a little bit different on this intro and a surprise giveaway because, hey, man, everybody likes some free shit. So if you want to win this shirt right here, anything can happen. All you got to do is hit me up in the comment section and answer this. What was my first music review related video? And I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the funniest lyrics. But if you want to get one of these shirts for yourself, maybe you don't win. You can see I got the red one on right here. You can go to God.com. That's G-A-W-D-D, -D, where they also have some other shirts, hats, and jackets. And you can use Not The Singer as a promo code to get 10% off. So that's not bad, man. Watch this video and then go and get some fresh gear. What's up, everyone? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email as right here. But right now, you are tuned into my review for Drake's new album, excuse me, oh my bad, it's a playlist called More Life. Now of course, when he dropped views, it got a lot of mixed reviews because you know, that shit was kind of long, had some dull moments, and it was also just all over the place sonically. So I think a lot of people were really curious to see what direction he was gonna go with, with this project. And in my opinion, he pretty much did the same thing, but just a little bit better. He's still coming with a wide variety of sounds, including his bangers, those soft and slow R&B tracks, those island jams, slash dance halls, slash Afrobeats tracks, so he's coming out and putting everything on this bitch except for the kitchen sink. So if you like Drake, you like a wide variety of his sounds, that's absolutely what you're going to get here. So as I mentioned, I do think this is a little bit better than Views, but I don't think either album is his greatest. And I don't see either as an album or playlist project, whatever the hell. I just don't see these two projects as projects that'll go down as hip hop classics. But it seems pretty clear Drake is just having fun and doing whatever he wants to do at this point in his career. And I can actually respect that man he's already put out a lot of albums people will argue all day about which ones are his best so feel free to hit me up in the comment section with how you would put them in order but like I said he's just having fun now doing that worldly type of music that borrows from all kinds of different genres so I'm just gonna jump in this review and talk about some of the sounds he has going on first of all he does have some of those slow and dreary drizzy Drake tracks and these ones are usually my least favorite I'm talking about tracks like nothing's into something and teenage fever and of course, Party Next Door makes one of his usual appearances on Since Way Back with his crackly voice, which I just, I'm not a big Party Next Door fan, man. Every time I see him featured on a song, I almost always know it's gonna be one of my least favorite tracks, including on here, because I didn't like that track at all. His voice was crackly, and he has some of those awful lyrics that he's known for when he says, Mama warned me that you were bad, like dun 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 dun. Whew, fucking brilliant. Now the thing with these slow Drake ballads is that people are usually very split on them. I mean, every time a Drake project comes out, people ask, is he doing more singing on here or more rapping on here? So if you like his singing, I'm sure you'll appreciate those tracks more than me. But for me personally, I don't usually like those slow ballad tracks, although every now and then there is a decent one. And I don't mind when he's doing a bit of singing on his bridges, his hooks, or bringing some harmonies into his verses. But when he's doing a lot of singing, as he is on this project, it quickly gets old to me because his voice is just very dull and monotone. There's not a lot of energy and passion in it. And that becomes even more apparent when you hear some of these great vocalists that are featured on this album. I mean, Georgia Smith sounds absolutely fantastic. I think she has a beautiful voice on Get It Together, which kind of sounds like something you would hear at a teenage clothing store for young girls. And of course, we got to bring up Sampha, who has one of the better tracks on here with 4422. He's just doing his usual thing with his unique voice and going in over some production that's a little bit haunting. So the guest features on here are definitely quite strong. And there are even some instances where I think a guest feature could have worked wonders. One of the main ones would be on the song Blem, which is just a groovy little dance hall track. It's all right. But then, of course, Drake is just so dull on this track, man. Imagine someone with more energy, like say a Collie Buds type of sound coming on here and just complimenting Drake and making this more of a dance hall banger. I think that would have helped, but you know what? A lot of people say they love that track, and I get it. It is just a fun, groovy sort of danceable track. And since I did mention Sampha and Georgia Smith, both who are representing the UK, I gotta be very clear here that there is a lot of UK influence on this thing. You'll hear Drake doing his Jamaican patois boy, you know how he be talking like that, and also making use of some London roadman slang. And you know, there's a lot of UK features on here as well, so there is a lot of varied inspiration that Drake is coming with 
on this project. You'll hear a lot of different sounds. So people are often saying, he's kind of like a chameleon, man. He's switching his shit up. Maybe the chameleon from Spider-Man, if you remember him, man. He's an old comic villain. I don't even know if he's still in this shit. But basically, he's a guy who just changes whenever he wants to and just borrows from everything. So Drake is definitely doing that on here. And as for other features from the UK, you're going to hear Skepta, who has a little interlude. I thought that was nice for what it is. Just Skepta bringing you one of those London bangers. And of course, London MC Giggs is featured on KMT, as well as the song No Long Talk. So you are going to get a lot of that UK influence. I thought Giggs was pretty dope on this. I mean, they weren't his best verses, but I just like his cadence, his delivery. He has kind of this sneaky style. But people were absolutely killing him on Twitter and calling him trash. But I would say give his Landlord album a chance, because I think he has better verses and just better songs on there than what you'll hear from him on this project. But hey, I'm not here to twist your arm. And I can understand, he does have a little bit of a dry, almost dull, monotone sound. But either way, check out that Landlord, because I think that was a dope album. Now, of course, I'm bringing up how, you know, we got the song KMT featuring Giggs. And this is the one where Drake was accused of stealing a flow from XXX Tentacion. I think that's how you say his name. I'm not even 100% sure. But he had a song called Look At Me, and the flows are so damn similar, it's hard to say that it's just a coincidence. Because, I mean, Drake has been known to do this just to shang sung people and steal their souls and their flows. And hell, even on this album, there's a song called Ice Melt featuring Young Thug, which really just sounds like he's taken some shit from Dram, who he already stole the soul from when he did Hotline Bling, which, of course, took from Cha Cha. So Drake is just always out here borrowing, taking from other people, taking from other genres. That's just what he does. And you're definitely going to get it all over this one. I actually thought Ice Melts was one of the worst songs on here, by the way. It just sounded kind of cartoonish. And Young Thugga was just doing his usual shit on here, being screechy and all over the place. But I would say Young Thug was much better on Sacrifices, where he's actually coherent. And it made me laugh when he threw out that sunny delight ad lib because hey man who doesn't fuck around with some sunny delight sometimes you need that it's delicious and this track also features two chains who comes in with his usual humor he has a line about thanking a girl for giving it to him like a pilgrim you know how two chains does man he's just pretty silly but i thought he had a nice flow on here i like the cadence that drake was using he was kind of sharp at the end of every bar which was just kind of different for him so that was cool so that track would be one of my favorites i did like the features on there you also get kanye west on glow which to me was just this minimalistic track there wasn't much to it, although Kanye West did sound pretty dope because he actually sounds like that old school Kanye, maybe, you know, college dropout or graduation. So I thought that was kind of cool, his verse on there. But the best part of that song really was when we get that Earth, Wind, and Fire devotion sample on the end because that is a classic and I love me some damn Earth, Wind, and Fire. So it's usually not a good sign when the best part of your song is someone else's song. But hey, sometimes that's how it works out. And bar-wise slash content-wise, there isn't really too much that was crazy about this project because it's just Drake going through the usual shit. He has some personal introspective tracks. He's rapping and singing about the issues he has with girls, trust issues. You know how it is by now. It's just Drake doing the same old thing. And he even has this really rough flow on Can't Have Everything where he's off the damn beat. So I don't know what that was about, but that was another track that I would file under one of my least favorites. Although he does have some gems on here, man. I really liked on Free Smoke, for example, when he brings up how he chose to ignore the advice that Hove gave him on Light Up, where Jay-Z said something about just ignoring people. But instead, Drake decided he wants to go for people's heads. That's what he says on that song. And he actually does that on Lose You, where he calls out Meek Mill for always rapping about Rollies and claiming that he's doing it to inspire people when really Drake thinks that he's just doing it to stroke his ego. So I thought that was kind of a cold line. He also gets at Tory Lanez on Do Not Disturb where he's actually coming with one of those tracks that are just a free flow Drake track, man, where he goes in for minutes at a time just flowing with no hook. You know those songs when it's this time in this place. But this track is called Do Not Disturb even though he does say 7 a.m. in Germany on this song at one point. So I thought he should have just called this shit 7 a.m. in Germany because that's what it sounded like to me. You know how it is when Drake makes those tracks, they're usually some of his best ones. And I would say this is one of the best tracks on the project because, again, he's flowing his ass off, has some nice bars, and really, he's just getting personal and rapping about all the different shit that he's gone through. And he even brings up how when he was working on Views, he was very angry and just dealing with a lot of shit, and he was starting to become someone who he didn't want to become. So I thought that was an interesting track. I like these free flow tracks from Drake. That was one of my favorites. And even some of the Island Jams on here weren't that bad to me. I know he's been doing that for a little while now. Obviously, we heard it on Views with songs like Controla 
and one dance, you know, some dance hall tracks, Afro beats tracks, whatever you want to call them. And he does have a couple on here that are kind of dope. I thought Passion Fruit had a cool sound to it. It's like audio starburst, just makes you feel like you're sitting out in the sun, drinking out of a coconut, something nice and smooth, but also getting you all fucked up because that's what you do when you're chilling in like the Dominican or Puerto Rico or wherever you might be. And then he had a song called Madiba Rhythm or Mabita Rhythm. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not 100% sure. But I did like this one, man. It has some pulsating bass. It's nice and fun and bright. Just the type of track that gets you moving. So I think he really pulled off the island jams better on this album than he did on Views. And some of his rapping on here is all right, man. I wouldn't say it was anything fantastic or out of the ordinary because it is just Drake giving you what Drake does. But there were some of those lines that I mentioned that I did appreciate. So... Whew, here we are at the end. This was a long ass review. There is so much to talk about. This was probably too long. I tried to condense it, but you know, I wanted to be thorough and let you know how I felt about a lot of these tracks. So this was kind of a rant, but more of a long rant than anything else. But in the end, to me, this is still a three out of five, man. I don't like this enough to give it a 3.5, even though I do think it's better than Views, which I did rate a three. It's just a little bit better than that, but pretty much it's just the same shit to me, just done a little bit better. So can't go higher than that, but there are a couple tracks on here I like, but it suffers from some of the same issues as Views. It's way too long, 22 tracks, so most people aren't going to like everything on here. I think they'll pick and choose a couple of tracks, depending on if you like Dance Hall Drake, Afro Beats Drakes, Rapping Drake, Singing Drake, whichever Drake it is you happen to like that's what you're going to go with even uk london road band drake is on here there's just man there's so many drakes oh, give me a headache trying to keep track there's just a million drakes man can't keep track of them all but a three feels fair to me and the way i describe this album is like if a group of people ordered a pizza and they got the works on it and then everyone had to pick off what they liked before they could enjoy eating it that's kind of what this one's like i don't think it's bad at all i damn sure don't think it's classic it's just a three out of five man it's a little bit better than the average because i do like some of the things he's doing on here messing around with these unique sounds but ultimately this is not a great album or a classic album to me good three out of five that's just what i'm going to go with so again this was kind of ranty i apologize if you know you didn't really feel that maybe i should have cut this down but hey man that's how we're going to do it this time got some more reviews on the way so make sure you hit me up in the comment section with your thoughts let me know what Drake album you like the best, or feel free to list them in order. And of course, make sure you do all that good YouTube and social media stuff, man. Where you like my videos, you share them, you follow me on Twitter, you retweet the videos, and of course, you gotta subscribe to my channel and click like on that Facebook page. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will see you next time.